on it. And when they would rain, the rain would fall on us. So the fact that we got out of that situation and our life wasn't in danger anymore, my mother was like, this is amazing. So after two years, we ended up getting selected to move to the US. Mind you, I just told you guys earlier the statistic that 17 years to 22 years that it takes for refugees to actually get resettled. And even within that number, only 1%. 1% of refugees in the world get resettled. So today, there's 65 million refugees worldwide. Out of that 65 million, only 1%. And the average amount of time they spend in a refugee camp is 17 to 22 years. So when my family got selected to move to Manchester, New Hampshire, the coldest place on earth, <laughs> in the middle of February, it was surreal to us, completely surreal to be with a single mother who had nothing at all, and then to move to the richest country in the world. A place where people dream about. Even people who, who are well off, who have a ton of money, they can easily move here. It's still super hard for them to move here. And then for my family to actually resettle here, it was insane. It was surreal. We realized that we had a lot of trauma that we experienced you know, three years prior to that with all the stuff that we saw. But we were so present with the hope of getting out of the Congo that we actually didn't even fully live the trauma, right? We'll walk down the street, we'll see people chopped up with a machete, we'll see people burnt with fire all over their body. But to us, that didn't really matter because we were trying to survive. So we found ourselves in Manchester, New Hampshire. By the way, New Hampshire is the second whitest state in the country. After Vermont, I have nothing against, I've never been to Vermont, but that's not really a good comparison, you know what I mean, for Vermont's one and New Hampshire's like 96% white. But what ended up happening is, we found a community that came, that came around us. This pictures that you see actually, this is actually our first year, our first year in, in New Hampshire. And we found a, a community that opened their arms to us. They said, my, my mother's name was Bernadette. They said, Bernadette, we're gonna be on your side no matter what. And the more the community came around us, the more we started feeling like we belong here. The more that all the trauma that we went through just became like that was the past. If we're gonna move forward, we're gonna focus on what this country has to provide to us, how we're gonna move forward. So I'm gonna throw it back to you guys. You know, what's happening now or what's been happening for a while that you that in your heart you feel compelled to do something and you haven't picked it up to actually get involved. And what's holding you back from getting involved? How do you identify yourself if you were actually involved with that thing? How would you feel about it? And what do you need to do in order to continue to be involved with that thing? Because the whole point is, the only way that you can change the world is by changing the community that you're in. That's where it starts.